I'm super excited about this video because I saw you many behind the scenes of my self-portrait photography and I teach you how to get creative through self-portraits and how useful self-portrait photography is gonna be for you to improve your portrait photography skills with models or client work. So today I'm not gonna show you a behind the scenes, I'm gonna show you exactly how to locate one key light to create dramatic self-portraits or even portrait photography, if you like. It's gonna be useful for that, self-portraits or portrait photography. And today I'm gonna be using one key light, continuous light, but this can be applied for any flash or key light of any kind because it's just position of the light. So I'm using a continuous light because for the sake of this video, it's gonna be easier for you to see how the light falls on my face and my body so I can explain you better. This light is super, super affordable. It's my new travel light and it's super good because I take it to my clients' places. It could be a house or the other day I was shooting in a kitchen for some food photography and stuff. And it's super easy to carry and super portable. So you're gonna have the link below and you have a coupon code of a 10% discount if you wanna grab it. But you have a light, by any means, use that one because it's gonna be useful enough. So, I'm starting this video with my favorite lighting. This is a light setup I use a lot because it's my favorite one. And it's useful for all kinds of shots. Even for beauty portraits, if you don't want this classy beauty portrait when it's like a lot of light on it. 45 degrees the light there, you can see this lighting, this triangle here, and it's called Rembrandt lighting. Obviously, it's called Rembrandt because it's been very popular by Rembrandt, the painter, and it created this style on his paintings, leaving this kind of lighting here in this side, which is very dramatic, but not super dramatic, so it's quite cool for cinematography. It's very used for cinematography. But as you can see, it's perfect for YouTube videos as well or for moody self-portraits. But you're gonna get more moody. I'm gonna move now the light for you to see. The only thing you have to do is to experiment. So if you put it more in one side, you're gonna see here, I have a lot of self-portraits like this. You have half a side, very dark, and the other side, very bright. So you have to shoot in a dark room. And if you have light filtrations, like a window you cannot cover too much or things like that, right now my room is not really, really dark. But what I do is rise the depth of fill so everything gets darker and then I put the light close to me. So don't be too paranoid because many people are like super worried about don't having light filtrations for moody portraits. You can have them. I have them in my home photography studio, which by the way, I have a video, probably you saw it already because it's quite popular. You can have a home photography studio even in a small room in your place with one key light, that's all you need. So I'm gonna link it down below as well for you to see. But guys, this is super easy to make. And I'm seeing myself now, this is very dark. Maybe you don't like such a moody portrait, it's too much. There is one very inexpensive thing you can use, which is a reflector, this one. For sure you saw it already. It's super affordable and it comes with different uh, colors, silver, gold, white, and black. So the black, in this occasion, you're not gonna notice the difference, but you will put it here. If you have a room and you have a white wall here, what it's gonna do, if you put it here, is avoid the light from bouncing from the white wall. Because if it bounces, this is not gonna be dark enough. So what you can do, if you don't like that dramatic, you can put the silver or the white, and you will see here, you see, it leaves the shadows a bit, I personally don't like it. You can measure a bit how much you wanna do it, but I prefer drama. That's why I love dramatic shots and you guys love my portrait photography and self-portrait photography. This is a technique I use a lot and then I use props as well. I do have videos about this on my channel to make the pictures more creative. You can use flowers, you can use a rose, you can use whatever you want to make it more creative. So it's not just a normal dramatic portrait. You can use always props. Outfits do a lot as well. For example, right now, you can see me, I'm using a black t-shirt because if I put a pink t-shirt or a print shirt, it's not gonna be as dramatic because the light is gonna bounce in the colors of the shirt and it's not gonna be the same. This is super important and many people disregard the outfits and the outfits play such an important part. So I'm gonna show you as well. 
I'm gonna remove the light and I'm gonna put it on top of me for you to see another cool effect you can do. So this is the light, which is super tiny. I'm gonna put it on top of me for you to see. So you put it here. I mean, you're not gonna see it properly because I'm using my arms, but you would put it overhead with a tripod or with a CS stand and you can create this, you see? It's super moody and in cinematography it's used a lot as well for interviews or dramatic scenes. So for men, it works very well because for female maybe it's too harsh, this kind of moodiness. But this is another effect you can do as well. And I'm gonna keep showing you more positions. Okay, so rim light, which is in one side or a little bit behind. This is distracting a lot the, because this is for the shake of this video, the RGB light. I'm gonna remove it. Actually, this is distracting you a lot as well. Yeah, there you go. So now there is not too many distractions. Apart of my guitar, I'm gonna remove it. Okay, now you can have a better idea of how the portrait would look like. So if I put it again a bit more in front, you're gonna see how cool this light is. Play always as well with the body. The body, if it's straight, it looks cool. But if you play moving around, you can see as well the shadows of my neck, features of my arms, it's gonna be way better. So always play to move around the camera because many people, what they do because they don't know how to pose is be too in the front of the camera and they don't move the body. Light is everything in photography. If you move around, you're gonna create shadows which actually accentuate features of your body and it's gonna look way better. Then play with your hands or things like this, but always experiment with body position. I'm just using one super affordable light and you can see it's all you need to do this. Then as well, one mistake many people do, I'm gonna put it like it was before. Yeah, I'm back. One mistake everybody does is using moody background, like the black I have here, and then they put the light like this. Like, yeah. This is not dramatic and this doesn't match with the color of the backdrop because if it's black, you want a moody portrait or video like I'm doing right now, but the light doesn't match. It's like, I don't know, photographers are super scared of shadows and actually shadows is the signature of my work. I love shadows because I think it's very good to create moodiness on the pictures and make the people look more serious on the portraits. I do use a lot of shadows. Let me put it back because I hate this lighting. This one is way better. Can you see the difference? It creates depth. So I do use a lot this kind of dramatic lighting for music artists press shots. I do use a lot lighting and shadows because I find lighting, it plays a massive part because the artists I'm shooting with, they look more professional, more serious. It creates this kind of artistic flair rather than taking a cheesy portrait with a lot of light, which is not that good and it's very cheesy. So lighting is one of the main things you have to use for your self-portrait photography or portrait photography overall. I do have an amazing library of self-portrait photography videos on my channel, portrait photography and many other things. So if you are into that, please subscribe to my channel and like this video if you are taking useful things from it. Because I'm gonna keep the videos coming. You saw like with just one light moving it around, you can play a lot with setups and the only thing you need is one light even if it's in your room in your place and you can create amazing things so we'll see you very soon guys i hope you enjoyed it see you in the next one